Sandy with Urban Rebel Designs in Aztec, New Mexico. And today we're going to be creating a smoky eye look on this gorgeous, huge sleigh bed. Um, my little customer came in and they picked the finish for this from one of my cabinet door samples. And this is what they picked. So this is what we are trying to recreate. When you jump on, say hello to me. If you like the project, then you know what to do. Um, if you have any questions, please post them here, and I will do my best to answer them on the live. Good morning, Annette. Um, and if I miss them because my back's going to be to you for a little while, I will go back and answer all of your questions in the comments after this is over. So to get you caught up, what I did was... I sprayed two coats of drop cloth. Hi, Michelle. Um, let it dry completely. And yes, for a project this big, good morning, Ellen. I use my sprayer. I love my sprayer. Couldn't live without it. So the way that we're going to create the finish for from the cabinet door, and I'm sorry my lighting is a little off this morning. I'm in my paint booth, my happy place. have my earphones because I usually get in here and listen to music and just go to town. So I did a base coat, two coats of drop cloth, let it dry completely. And then one little trick that I wanted to show you, and I'm going to have to turn you a bit, is what I call my PB distressing. So I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to have to get you up close. Um, you can see right here on this line where I have just taken my little zip sander and just done a straight line just to give this a little more shape and movement. Sorry if I'm making you sick. All right, there we go. So what we're going to use today is we're going to use Dixie Belle's Black Wax for our eyeliner. And then we're going to use Dixie Belle's Brown Wax. And you can see I use... A lot of it um, for our shading so we just kind of want to dirty this up a little bit and like I said it's kind of like creating a smoky eye so what we want to start with is the black wax and I have just a little detail artist brush um, for those of you who want to know I probably either got it at Hobby Lobby I may have gotten it at Walmart I go through these things like crazy so I buy them in bulk um, so I got just a little bit of black wax on the tip and then I dab it off on my lid and I'm going to be working from the lid because it takes just a little bit and then we're just going to start let's see yeah you can see this we're going to start up here in the corner and all I am doing is outlining this inset with the black wax and really when it's finished you're not going to notice it but you would definitely notice it if I didn't do it. You're watching from Palm Coast, Florida. Oh man, I wish I was there. So I'm just going to finish outlining these creases. And you'll see a big difference. And it may look a little cartoonish before we get the brown wax on. That's fine. I like to tell people in my classes it's the Cinderella effect. Sometimes you got to go through really ugly to get really beautiful. So I'm just going to finish doing this. And then we will get started with our brown wax. And this is really a fun finish to do. Because it gives you an aged but elegant look. But it's a lot of fun to work with. So now I have it outlined, and you can see how that made it pop just a little bit. And then we'll start on our brown wax. And before you ask, I do my waxing a little bit different than most people. I did not pre-coat this with clear wax, and I did not do a clear coat before I started. Um, I like to work with the wax on for lack of a better term, the raw paint. And because I've got some corners, I'm using a, a French round to apply my wax. And those of you who know me know that 
with the exception of this brush, I do not wash my wax brushes because why well, go through that? I'm just going to use them again probably the same day. Oh, Ellen, great. Then I know I'm doing something right. Ellen said that she does it this way too. That makes me feel much better. So I really want to leave the center sort of open. I'm going to go back and dirty it up. But we're just going to start in the corners. And I like to start by just roughly drawing out the shape that I want. And then I will go back and fill it in. And you'll notice I'm not doing it very heavy. And I'm still working from my jar lid. Um, that just makes it easier. Let's see how well I can do this freehand. I want to know a couple of things this morning. Number one, it is Memorial Day weekend, so I want to know what everybody's weekend plans are. I can tell you what mine are. I will be in the paint booth all weekend because I got an order this week for a hundred painted chairs for a new wedding venue in our area. I'm really excited, really honored that they asked me. But it's a little intimidating. So I want to know what your weekend plans are. And I also want to know how many of you paint for a living. Your oldest baby is graduating. How cool is that? Congratulations. Of course, if they're graduating, they're not much of a baby anymore. Okay. So I have roughly drawn this in. I wanted to show you this. So every time that I go back in the jar to load my brush up, I'm not getting a whole lot on it. If you can see right there, my brush is, I've been using it. So it's gonna look like I have a whole lot more. And then I go to my lid and I'm gonna dab off most of it. And that really, really helps you control your wax if you want to clear wax first or clear coat first, that's fine. Do whatever you're most comfortable with and what works for you. That's the great thing about painting furniture or kitchen cabinets or anything else. Do what you're most comfortable with. Um, now, like I said, I'm going to back up. I have an order for 100 painted chairs for a wedding venue. So if you all have any inspiration that you care to share, I would greatly appreciate it. So I have this roughly drawn in. Here is where I really differ from most people because to spread my wax and even it out, I'm gonna use a damp sponge. Am I missing any questions? Uh, Karen Season Good wants to know what kind of brush you're using. Karen, it is a paint pixie brush. It's a French round. Um, I have heard rumors, and I hope it's true, that Dixie Bell is going to have something similar in the near future. I haven't heard it directly from Dixie Bell, but we can always hope. See, you're painting today and tomorrow and working at the store Monday. I understand that. Um, it's a little difficult to paint and run a store at the same time. Trust me, I know. So I just used one of these synthetic silk sponges. I barely dampened it. But you can see with the water, because Dixie Bell Wax is water-based, how easy it makes it to smooth it out and to clean it up. And that's where my control of the wax comes from. Now, I know Pam Haskins would top coat this first and then do her wax, and trust me, if Pam does it that way, that's probably the best way to do it. A lot of people will use clear wax first and then use their colored waxes, but I have gotten used to using a damp sponge or a damp paper towel to smooth it and I will just keep working it until I get it, get the look that I'm going for. And you'll notice 
If you can see right here, it looks a little dirty where my wax has overlapped. That's fine because I do want to dirty this piece up a little bit. So I'm just taking my damp sponge and thinning that out. And we're gonna go all the way around. And I like to have a little bit of the wax showing on the edge because let's face it, in nature, nothing is perfect, perfect. And I like for my things to look natural. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more on this side because I was too neat on this side. So I'm gonna add a little bit of wax down through here. And when you do it this way, if you have done what I call the PB distressing, it really makes that distressing pop out. And on a big flat sleigh bed like this, you've got a lot of flat surface. So you wanna give it as much character as you can. Now, I do want to dirty up the center and I'm not finished with this area by any means, but I have some wormholes, I guess. You can't really, you can see them a little bit right in here. I want those to pop out, so I'm going to take my brush and my damp sponge, and I'm just going to rub my brush over my damp sponge, because I don't want to go directly on this with my wax brush. It would give me too much. And then I'm just going to rub over those areas, so I can get some down in those holes to make them pop out. You can see it much better now. And then I'm going to dampen it again and we're going to smooth that out. I have my continuous Mr. Spray Bottle. You can tell it's well loved. If you don't have one of those, please get one. Okay, Claudia, you're in Colorado. What part? Because we are on the New Mexico-Colorado border. And I'm sorry my back is to you for the majority of this, but it's a big project. So if I'm missing any questions, I promise I will go back and answer them. Claudia's from Monument. I'm trying to think where Monument is. Is that around Grand Junction? Okay, Claudia, you're close enough to come see me sometime. Okay, Patsy, I'm originally from Tennessee. I feel like I got my homegirls on here today. Thank you for joining me. I will post pictures of this finish when I get it completed. I have a couple of the panels on this other end that are almost complete and I'll pick you up in just a minute and show you those and then I will post pictures of the completed project on my business page which is Urban Rebel Designs. You can go over there and follow the progress. I will also be doing videos of my progress on the hundred chairs. I'm just trying to think of a cute name for that. Did I say Roll Tide? <laughs> okay, I'll give you Roll Tide one time. I'm from Tennessee, so it's Go Balls. Okay, I saw somebody from Cleveland. Hang on. Michelle Woodrow. Cleveland was my hometown. All right, now my comments have stopped. There we go. Um, so I am just going to... Go back in and continue working this because I'm seeing some spots that I'm not happy with. And for those of you who paint furniture, you know you work and you work and you work and you work till you get it the way you want it. Um, this is one piece of a five piece bedroom set that I'm doing. So I'll be working on this all weekend, and then I'm going to start on my chairs. And I'm going to go in here in this corner, and I'm sorry that's off camera, but I want to get some wax on there. 
I need to see for balance how it's going to look. And you'll notice I'm using very, very little wax. I'm going to put it on and I'm going to smooth it out. And then I'm going to step back and look at it, put it on and smooth it out. Yes, sir. Corey Leonard is from Knoxville, my hometown. <laughs> so my husband is from Knoxville. That made him very happy, thank you. My mother still lives in Maribel, so we get to go visit her from time to time. Miss the Smokies, love the Smokies. But now we're desert people. Okay, so I don't want to keep you on here all day because it is a holiday weekend and I'm sure that some of you have some really fun grand plans. So I just want to smooth this out and then I'll move you over and let you see what I've already done. Yes, sir. Tammy Brackley just got on. She just wanted to make sure that that was a headboard. This is a giant sleigh bed headboard. Yes, Ellen, I know Billy's from Rockwood. That's why we speak the same language. And Ellen is from North Carolina. We have a lot of good Southern girls on here today. Okay. Go Vols from Tennessee. Go Vols. Let's hope we have a decent team this year. Suzanne Winter wants to know if you still distressed by sanding as well. I do. Um, I do a little <coughs> bit of everything. So this, we're going for a more sleek look. So I'm only doing the PB sanding on it. And by the way, let me show you my sander if I can find it. It's over here behind me. This is the niftiest little thing. It's kind of squishy. Um, when you get it, and I think you can get them from Amazon, and I think it's called a micro zip. Um, I hang on to these for dear life. I love it. Notice I even have my store name written on it. In case I use it in class, nobody walks out with it. But when you get it, it comes with the handle, and you can use it this way, or you can use it this way. And it also comes with pre-cut strips of sandpaper. And for distressing, unless you're doing a large area for distressing, if you're just wanting the lines to pop out, this is the perfect thing. I love it. Okay, do I work from design or by inspiration? Okay, Adina, I am not a rule follower. Um, not a rule breaker either. I believe in bending them. So, I may see something that gives me an idea on color or texture, but everything comes out of here, which can be a scary place at times. Um, so I'm not claiming that all of my finishes are original. I do put my spin on everything, and that's one thing I enjoy about it. Like I said, I'll put my headphones in, I will crank my music up, and I will be in here the rest of the day getting this finished so we can get it out. But a lot of times it comes from, I get a lot of my inspiration from things that I see. I love iron and rust, so I like to recreate that in a lot of things. I don't like things that are pristine and perfect because I'm not. So all of my things are tweaked. Okay, what's it? It's called a micro zip. Um, you can get them from Amazon. I don't think any of the big box stores have it. There is one local hardware store around here that used to carry it. How will I fade the circle? I'm just going to keep working it. Um, I use a synthetic silk sponge and I dampen my sponge. But I'm also going to dirty up the inside a little bit. But you can see I just barely dampened my sponge. You can't even see any coming out of it. And then I just take that and I just keep working it. Now when you do it this way, one of the advantages is you're also going to soften your finish. But keep in mind, I sprayed this. I let it set overnight. 
to completely dry and cure as much as possible before I started because using a damp sponge, you're injecting water into a water-based product. So you need that dry and that cure time not to pull your paint back up. Um, so that's how I do it. But it also gives you just a silky soft smooth. Now when I get this done, I will let it sit for at least an hour. And then I'm going to do two coats of top coat, probably gator hide. Um, and then it'll be ready to go out the door and I can move the next piece in and start on it. So, I'm going to move you over real quick, let you see what I've already done. And then I'm not going to keep you on all day. Because we all have things to do. So, hang on, hope you don't get dizzy. And my cord may not reach. So you can see down here that I've already dirtied up part of it on the top and the center pieces. And like I said, I'm going to keep my inspiration piece here next to me. Um, it's hand painted. Let me set you back down. It's hand painted, so it's not going to be exact. If you're doing this for a living, please make sure that your customers always know that it's not going to be an exact replica because it is hand painted, but it's going to be beautiful. Um, have any questions? post them here. I'll go back in just a few minutes and answer everything that I can. If I can't, I'll point you in the right direction. Uh, feel free to hop over to my Facebook page, Urban Rebel Designs, and you can follow the progress of this, and you can follow the progress of the 100 chairs. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. One last thing, we have a giant chalkboard in our store. I have a heart for the military. And because it is Memorial Day, we ask that people who have a name to add to the board in remembrance come by and add it. If you're not in the area and you have a name that you would like added, please just let me know. I will be happy to add it for you. Hope everybody has a great holiday weekend. And stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.